Citations and bibliography in Microsoft Word go hand in hand. First of all, what's a citation? It's a reference to another source, like a book, a web page, a magazine, and a bibliography is inserted at the end of the document linking to and providing more details of those citations throughout your document. So for example, in my Phil Collins document, I'm going to scroll down here and show you one of my citations. For this quote, it actually came from, I think it was a magazine article, the author's last name was Parkinson, the page was one, so instead of taking credit for this quote here and plagiarizing or infringing on copyright law and being sued, I'm going to go ahead and cite it here. And this the citation usually is the author's last name and the page number. Now the bibliography comes into play is when let's say you're reading this and you go hey I, I like this quote here I want to know more about it. Well this doesn't give us enough but we can use this as a reference and when I scroll all the way down to the end of my document Parkinson and the author's first name is Michael so it gives me more details so I can go to this magazine It's called one to one it was published in 1988 and be able to look that up and read it for myself so the bibliography or the works cited gives us more details about those citations throughout the document so I'm going to go ahead and hit control home and probably the biggest reason why you want to use Microsoft's built-in citations inserting them is because once you type it in it's there and you don't have to retype it in over and over again so for example let's start our first citation I'm going to scroll down at the bottom here and let's say let's delete this one here and we'll start from scratch instead of typing it in freehand let's use Microsoft's defaults here and it's going to be on the reference tab down in the citations and bibliography group First of all, the type is style. Well, if you haven't taken an English class, you want to go ahead and do that because it'll cover the styles when you're citing your works. But I'll give you a short overview here. The two most popular styles are AP or APA in Chicago. Chicago is typically used for non-educational documents like magazines and newspapers where APA is for educational documents. Well, I'm going to go ahead and select Chicago and you can only use one style at a time throughout your document. So if I'm halfway through my document and I use Chicago style, and then all of a sudden I decide to change it. Well, you can go ahead and change it. Once you change it to APA, everything throughout the document changes. And the style is reflective of the citations you're going to insert, the information. Probably the most affected by it is going to be your bibliography and what's listed there. Okay, so I'm going to go with Chicago here and I'm going to click on, make sure you know where your cursor's at, okay, and then click on the insert citation and you want to add a new source. Well, the type of source right here is website, but you also have other types of sources, like if you're reading a book, you want to be able to cite that book and give credit to the author and the title of the year of the city. First of all, let's just go ahead and scroll down and let's do website. Okay, go ahead and type in the author's name. And then when you're finished, you can go ahead and hit the tab key. But I want you to know that when you type in and you go into these fields here, look down in the example below to know exactly what it wants for these uh, citation. Because when it comes to citing, as you recall, it just adds the author's last name and the page number. Well, the author's last name is going to be pulling from this field and the page number, well, this is a website, so there's not going to be a page number here, but it will pull just a small amount of information and then everything else I fill in will be used in the bibliography. So again, if somebody's reading this and they go, oh, it's Luntz, and then the actual name of the page, they can look in the bibliography and know exactly what the website and they can go to it and read it themselves. So the other thing is before I move on is that if this is a corporate author, go ahead and check that and it deletes this and gives you this box here. But if there's more than one author, you can always click on edit here and then type in, let's say it's me, I'm the other author. Go ahead and click add. And then if I want to be the first author listed for credit, I can click on the up button. So now I'm first and click OK. And you can see, it puts in the format that I should have typed, um, it recommended that I ignored. And you can see the example last name comma first and any additional names um, separated by the delimiter semicolon. You can see it's um, the semicolon there. Of course, I don't want to be listed anymore, so I can click Edit and delete my name and click OK. Now let's go ahead and move on. The name of the web page, and you can see down below, it's like maybe it's about us. And you know, follow the example here. You can type in your own. Maybe it's about, and then the year. Maybe it was uh, copyrighted, or at the bottom of the web page, it says 2001. Uh, the month, and you can see down at the bottom, it wants the full month here, so no abbreviations. We can say January. Now it's not going to freak. It's basically recommending it and then down below the day maybe it was the fourth day of January now as you know when something's copyrighted and the year that you access it for websites is going to be uh, different because those web pages are dynamic the author can actually update those where in a book they usually don't update without a reprinting so in any case the year I accessed this was let's say 2007 and then the month accessed was now for the URL you can go ahead and type it in you can see the example down below. Keep in mind that 
not everybody's going to be citing a home page of a website because web websites can just be huge. I mean, you can have sub pages of sub pages and just have this address go really far out all the way to the right. So what I recommend is I'm going to open up my web page here and give you an example. Launch my internet. Show you how dynamic this is. You can see up at the top there's the address, but let's say I'm not giving a quote off the main page. You know, if this was Phil Collins' website, let's say, well, I click in one of the sub pages here. You see where it has the forward slashes, the subfolder, and the subfolder, then finally the web page. Go ahead and click on it. Control C to copy it, and then go ahead and close out of it. Come down into your URL, Control V and Victor to paste, and there you go. I don't have to retype it in. That's the URL. So they have direct access to that web page now. Keeping in mind that uh, web pages do change, and who knows, maybe the author of the website will delete this page and no longer give you access to their games, or at least that web page. And when I'm finished, all I have to do is go ahead and click OK, and it does two things. First of all, it saves all that information, and I can come up here to my Manage Sources, and it divides it into two sections. It has the left and the right. Now, the left is the master list. This master list basically says that any new document that you create is going to have this citation here from here on out. And then, of course, over here says what's currently in this document. And you can delete what's in the master list. You got the delete button here, but when you come over here to the current document, the delete button's not available because you're using it. If you go ahead and you delete it from this document, this citation, then you'll have the availability of the delete button, which we'll find out later on. So, for example, I close out and I come up here and I click on the office logo, create a new document, double click on blank document. There's my new document. Well, I come up to my references and I manage my sources, and there it is, it's sitting right there. It's tied to all new documents. Now, if I don't want it tied to all new documents, I can delete it because maybe I just want it in that one um, document, okay? Because maybe I may never use these uh, citations again. So I'll close out of here and I'll close out of the new document and we'll come back here. Let's make a few changes here. Let's say we misspelled his name, Luntz, L-U-N-T-S, when it should be Z, and it's supposed to be Frank. Boy, I really messed up. When in doubt, you can go ahead and right-click on the field here and say you want to edit the source, okay? You can edit the source here, or you can click on Manage Sources, and you can edit the global template over here, or just come over here and edit what's in your current list and click on the Edit button. It gives you the same fields, right? So instead of Luntz, it's supposed to be uh, Z. And instead of Robert, it should be Frank. And then when I'm finished, just go ahead and click OK. Now when you click OK, it's going to ask you, it says, look, you're updating the current list, that's fine. But it also exists in your master list, so when you create new documents, do you want that updated as well? or do you just want that left alone? I say yes, we want to update both, okay? And you can see it automatically changes over here. In all new documents, it'll be correct, and in the current document. So I'll go ahead and close out, and there it is, L-U-N-T-Z. Fantastic. Other things you can do that's kind of fun is you can right-click and edit the citation. Just say you want to suppress the author's name. When you click OK, it actually gives us the web page and the year. You can right-click and also suppress that as well, but I'm going to edit the citation, say I don't want to suppress the author. I'll just click OK and just have the author's last name. Let's do one more. We'll scroll down here and come to the next citation where I should be having a citation. And let's go ahead and delete that and insert our own here. Come up here, insert a citation. And the cool thing about it is that once I add a citation, it's already there. So I don't have to type it in. I can just click on it. It adds it for me down below. If this text right here that I'm citing is from that same web page, all I have to do is click on the insert citation and click on it, and it adds it below. Of course, you don't want to keep clicking it because it keeps adding it, so I'll click undo. We'll do another one here. So insert citation to add new source. And let's do this for a book this time. And while you look away for a second, I'm going to quickly type in all the information because now you know how to type in. Okay, there we go. Just typed in while you weren't looking here. Um, I typed in the author's name. The title is PC is not PC. Uh, Phil Collins, maybe a pun there. Uh, the year, whatever the name of the book that Sean actually published here that I'm referencing. And then when I'm finished, I can go ahead and click OK. Or, you know, I can click on Show All Biography Fields. And it gives me a list here of additional fields. But then it just has the one in asterisks, the ones that are recommended for me to type in. And I can check that to remove it. Of course, the Chicago style is also going to be different from the AP style. It doesn't ask for a page in the book, does it? So what I'm going to do is click OK. Automatically adds it for me. OK, how about if we do one more? Let's say I'm coming through here. I've got something like the lyrics here, and I can't remember where it's from. I know I'm supposed to cite it, but I don't recall, and I better do some research. Well, I'm all up for making sure you do it right the first time. But if you forget, you, you want to be able to cite it, but you can't remember it, 
right at the moment, you can come up here and click on the insert citation and say add a placeholder. A placeholder, and you can type in whatever name you want, but I'm going to use the default and click OK, just means, hey, you got to cite it here. It gives me a warning saying, look, you got nothing here. When you get the information, would you please come and update this? I'm holding your place here for a citation. So when I'm ready, of course, I'm scrolling through the document, and I see this, oh, um, I better go ahead and update that. Go ahead and right click and select edit source and then type in the information and I'll go ahead and do that real quick okay keeping it fair and balanced here there we go we got a Barack Obama in any case uh, the title is Phil's Appeal and the year it was published in the city in any case when I'm done I can go ahead and click OK and watch it automatically updates it so the placeholder is just something for you to say oh I need to come back and make sure that I add my citation Hello, we've added enough citations in here and I need to add more. I can click at the end and click on the insert citation. It's got all the ones I currently added. If I'm using the same one, just go ahead and click on it and it makes it really nice. See, that way I don't have to type it in again, which just in a click automatically adds it for me. So I'm going to scroll down to uh, the end of my document here and I manually type this in. I'm going to go ahead and delete it all. In fact, delete works cited. And then once I have my citations in, now it's just uh, inserting my bibliography. So I can click on the bibliography button and I get two choices. I can do bibliography or works cited. What you see is what you get. Of course, if you click on insert bibliography, that just means it's going to add a default for you. So I'm just going to go ahead and choose this one and click on it. And voila, there it is. So I can click off in a blank area. It's got bibliography there. It is shaded. And even when I click off of it, it's still shaded because that's a default I set up. If I just want it shaded when I click on it, then I can change that option. But at least this way I know what fields are dynamic that will automatically update throughout my document. Let me give you a little hint here. If you haven't watched the other training videos, you can click on the Office button, go down to Word Options, click on the Advanced category, then scroll down through here where it says Show Document Content, and then you see where it says Always. You can say Only One Selected, and then click OK. So anytime I click on it, it shades it for me, or I select it. And basically, that's it. It's that simple here. If you need to make changes, just keep in mind, because these are dynamic fields, if you go ahead and update your citations within your document, it'll automatically update your bibliography. And that's all found, again, under your Manage Resources. So you click on the button up here on the Reference tab. And you can come in here and say, oh, it's not Obama. Let me click Edit. Or maybe it's not Phil's Appeal, as Phil is filled. In any case, when I'm done, I click OK, and it's updating it here, and it's only within this document. You can see that the other two, Hannity and Frank, are included. If I want to include this in all new documents, then just go ahead and click Copy. He'll be included in all new documents as well, and then I can click Close. You can see down here it's not updated. This is going to require a forced update. If you watch the two previous training videos on captions and inserting cross-references, you'll know that sometimes things don't update automatically. So to force an update, you can do it, well, actually one of three ways. The first way is clicking within the box and just updating this field by clicking on the Update button here. Or when in doubt, you can right-click and select the Update button there. Or you can hit Control a so it selects everything in the document. See how everything's selected. Because not only do we want the bibliography updated, but we also want the citation here. That's referring to this um, part, the bibliography, updated as well. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Control a and then hit F9 on the keyboard. And there it is. Fill is a field whatever that means, but nonetheless you get the point. You can uh, make changes. Just make sure if their changes aren't reflecting the document, you want to update everything within the document, all the citations, including the bibliography. Instead of right-clicking each citation and updating it, and right-clicking the bibliography and updating it, just hit Control a hit F9 on the keyboard, it'll automatically update for you. And last but not least, for those of you who want to go the extra mile, when you come to your Manage Sources and you say, look, I don't want all this in the new document, you can always select them and delete them, right? Just delete them right out of there then click close and then of course when you're done be sure to save your work thanks for watching hey as a quick reminder if you like my video please give it a thumbs up you can also click on me and subscribe to my channel get notified of the latest videos and for only two dollars a month you can have access to all my microsoft office training videos